Hi, it's Sue. Thanks for joining me for today's Bible reading for April 19th. And I'm reading 1 Kings 18, 19, and 20 today from the World English Bible. Verse 1. After many days, Yahweh's word came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go, show yourself to Ahab, and I will send rain on the earth. Elijah went to show himself to Ahab. The famine was severe in Samaria. Ahab called to Obadiah, who was over the household. Now Obadiah feared Yahweh greatly, for when Jezebel cut off Yahweh's prophets, Obadiah took one hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave, and fed them with bread and water. Ahab said to Obadiah, Go through the land, to all the springs of water, and to all the brooks. Perhaps we may find grass and save the horses and mules alive, that we not lose all the animals. So they divided the land between them to pass through it. Ahab went one way by himself, and Obadiah went another way by himself. As Obadiah was on the way, behold, Elijah met him. He recognized him and fell on his face and said, Is it you, my lord Elijah? He answered him, It is I. Go tell your lord, behold, Elijah is here. He said, How have I sinned that you would deliver your servant into the hand of Ahab to kill me? As Yahweh your God lives, there is no nation or kingdom where my lord has not sent to seek you. When they said he is not here, he took an oath of the kingdom and nation that they didn't find you. Now you go, now you say, go tell your Lord, behold, Elijah is here. It will happen as soon as I leave you that Yahweh's spirit will carry you, I don't know where. And so when I come and tell Ahab and he can't find you, he will kill me. But I, your servant, have feared Yahweh from my youth. Wasn't it told, my Lord, what I did when Jezebel killed Yahweh's prophets, how I hid 100 men of Yahweh's prophets with 50 to a cave and fed them with bread and water? Now you say, go tell your Lord, behold, Elijah is here, he will kill me. Elijah said, As Yahweh of armies lives, before whom I stand, I will surely show myself to him today. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. When Ahab saw Elijah, Ahab said to him, Is that you, you troubler of Israel? He answered, I have not troubled Israel, but you and your father's house, in that you have forsaken Yahweh's commandments, and you have followed the Baals. So, This is interesting, a couple things to note. It's We have the contrast between how Elijah was greeted between the two men and their different perception of Elijah. Um, Ahab was king. He was wicked king. And I think it said yesterday he was the wickedest so far. And, um, and then you have Obadiah, who I believe was the prophet. I have to look that up, but I'm assuming it's the same one that we have the book of Obadiah. Um, and as I said the other day, I'm trying to really notate when I see prophets in here. And one other thought came to me when I was listening to this. Um, oh, how Elijah is so bold before the king. When the king said, you're a troubler, he said, I'm not the troubler, you are. And, you know, that was the job of the prophets many times was to confront the kings. and. Uh, I recently heard a minister say, when kings and leaders go rogue, the prophets show up. Okay, so that's kind of what's happening here. So um, he said, is that you, you troubler of Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but you and your father's house, in that you have forsaken Yahweh's commandments, and you have followed the Baals. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel at Mount Carmel, and 450 of the prophets of Baal, and 400 of the prophets of Asherah, who eat at Jezebel's table. Jezebel being, you know, if you just tuned in and you don't know this part of the Bible, Jezebel is the wife of Ahab. So she's the queen. So Ahab sent all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together at Mount Carmel. Elijah came near to all the people and said, How long will you waver between two sides? If Yahweh is your God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And that, you know, that's God's word today to uh, followers is, you know, what's it going to be? Either get on one side or the other. Don't waver. You're either going to serve God or you're not. And he lets us know indelibly throughout Scripture which side to choose because the other one's not nice. It's not a good outcome because God loves us and he warns us repeatedly. So he's saying to Israel, what side's going to be? If you always God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. The people didn't say a word. Then Elisha said to the people, I, even I, only, am left as a prophet of Yahweh. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. 
No, I don't think that was true that he was the only one. Um, but anyway, that's what he said. So he says, um, let them therefore give us two bowls and let them choose one bowl for themselves and cut it into pieces, lay it on the wood and put no fire under it. And I will dress the other bowl, lay it on the wood and put no fire under it. You call on the name of your God and I'll call on Yahweh's name. The God who answers by fire, let him be God. All the people answered, what you say is good. Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, choose one bowl for yourselves and dress it first. For you are many and call on the name of your God, but put no fire under it. They took the bull which was given them, and they dressed it, and called on the name of Baal from morning until noon, saying, Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, and nobody answered. They leaped about the altar which was made. At noon Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is God. Either he is deep in thought, or he has gone somewhere, or is he on a journey, or perhaps he sleeps and must be awakened. They cried aloud and cut themselves in their way with knives and lances until the blood gushed on them. When midday was past, they prophesied until the time of evening offering, but there was no voice, no answer, and nobody paid attention. Elijah said to all the people, Come near to me, and all the people came near to him. He repaired Yahweh's altar that had been thrown down. Elijah took twelve stones, according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom Yahweh's word came, saying, Israel shall be your name. With the stones he built an altar in Yahweh's name. He made a trench around the altar large enough to contain two seas of seed. He put the wood in order and cut the bull in pieces and laid it on the wood. He said, fill four jars with water and pour it on the burnt offering. <coughs> Excuse me, and on the wood. He said, do it a second time, and they did it a second time. He said, do it a third time, and they did it a third time. The water ran around the altar and also filled the trench with water. At the time of the evening offering, Elijah the prophet came near and said, Yahweh the God of Abraham, of Isaac. How did I lose my place? Okay, Yahweh the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Israel. Let it be known today that you are God in Israel, and that I am your servant, and that I have done all these things at your word. Hear me, Yahweh, hear me that this people may know that you, Yahweh, are God, and that you have turned their heart back again. Then Yahweh's fire fell and consumed the burnt offering, the wood, the stones, and the dust, and licked up the water that was in the trench. When all the people saw it, they fell on their faces. They said, Yahweh is God, Yahweh is God. Elijah said to them, Seize the prophets of Baal, don't let one of them escape. They seized them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook of Kishon and killed them there. Elijah said to Ahab, Get up and drink, for there is the sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and drink. Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he bowed himself down on the earth and put his face between his knees. He said to his servant, Go up now and look toward the sea. He went up and looked and said, There is nothing. He said, Go again seven times. On the seventh time he said, Behold, a small cloud like a man's hand is rising out of the sea. He said, Go up and tell Ahab, Get ready and go down so that the rain doesn't stop you. In a little while the sky grew black and clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. Yahweh's hand was on Elijah, and he tucked his cloak into his belt and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a message to Elijah, saying, so let the gods do to me, and more also, if I don't make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow, about this time. When he saw that, he arose, ran for his life, and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a juniper tree. Then he requested for himself that he might die, and said, It is enough. Now, O Yahweh, take my life, for I am not better than my father's. He lay down and slept under a juniper tree, and behold, an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. He looked, and behold, there was at his head a cake baked on the coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. Yahweh's angel came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for you. He arose and ate and drank and went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, God's mountain. He came to a cave there and camped there, and behold, Yahweh's word came to him, and he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? 
He said, I have been jealous for Yahweh, the God of armies, for the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I, even I, only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. He said, Go out, stand on the mountain before Yahweh. Behold, Yahweh passed by, and a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before Yahweh. But Yahweh was not in the wind. After the wind there was an earthquake, but Yahweh was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, a fire passed, but Yahweh was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a still small voice. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle, went out, and stood in the entrance of the cave. Behold, a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous for Yahweh, the God of armies, for the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I, even I, only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. Yahweh said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, anoint Hazel, Hazael to be king over Syria. Anoint Jehu, remember him from a couple days ago? Anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshi, to be king over Israel. And anoint Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel Mahola, to be prophet in your place. He who escapes from the sword of Hazai, Jehu will kill, and he who escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. Yet I reserved 7,000 in Israel, all the knees of which have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth which has not kissed him. So see, he wasn't the only one, he just thought he was. Verse 19, so he departed from there and found Elijah, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing 12 yoke of oxen, excuse me, plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him. And he was the 12th. Elijah went over to him and put his mantle on him. Elisha left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me please kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. He said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? He returned from following him and took the yoke of oxen, killed them, boiled their meat with instruments of the of oxen. What? He returned from following him, took the yoke of oxen, and killed them, and boiled their meat with the instruments of the oxen. Oh, okay. And gave to the people and they ate. Then he arose and went after Elijah and served him. Then Hadad, the king of Assyria, gathered all his army together, and there were 32 kings with him with horses and chariots. He went up and besieged Samaria and fought against it. He sent messengers to Ahab, king of Israel, into the city and said to him, Thus says Ben Hadad, Your silver and your gold is mine, your wives also and your children, even the best are mine. The king of Israel answered, it is according to your saying, my Lord, O king, I am yours and all that you have. The messengers came again and said, Ben-Hadad says, I sent indeed to you saying, you shall deliver me your silver and gold and your wives and children, but I send my servants to you tomorrow about this time and they will search your house and houses of your servants. Whatever is pleasant in your eyes, they will put it in their hand and take it away. Then the king of Israel called all the elders of the land and said, please notice how this man seeks mischief for he sent me for my wives and my children and my silver and my gold, and I didn't deny him. <clears throat> all the elders and all the people said to him, Don't listen, don't consent. Therefore he said to the messengers of Ben-Hadad, Tell my lord the king all that you sent for to your servant. At the first I will do, but this thing I cannot do. The messengers departed and brought him back the message. Ben-Hadad sent to him and said, The gods do so to me, and more also, if the dust of Samaria will be enough for handfuls, for all the people who follow me. The king of Israel answered, Tell him, don't let him who puts on his armor brag like he who takes it off. When Ben-Hadad heard the message as he was drinking, he, he and the kings in the pavilions, he said to his servants, prepare to attack. They prepared to attack the city. Behold, a prophet came near to Ahab, king of Israel, and said, so there's an unknown prophet, a named prophet there. Um, he came, uh, behold, a prophet came near to Ahab, King of Israel said, Yahweh says, have you seen all this great multitude? Behold, I will deliver it into your hand today. Then you will know that I am Yahweh. Ahab said, by whom? He said, Yahweh says, by the young man of the princes of the provinces. Then he said, who shall begin the battle? He answered, you. Then he mustered the young men of the princes of the provinces, and there were 232 men. After them, he mustered all the people, even all the children of Israel, being 7,000. They went out at noon, but Ben-Hadad was drinking himself drunk in the pavilion, he and the kings, the 32 kings who helped him. The young men of the princes of the provinces went out first, and Ben-Hadad sent out 
and they told him, saying, Men are coming out from Samaria. He said, If they have come out for peace, take them alive, or if they have come out for war, take them alive. So these went out from the city, the young men of the princes of the provinces, and the army which followed them. They each killed his man. The Syrians fled, and Israel pursued them. Ben-Hadad, the king of Assyria, escaped on a horse with horsemen. The king of Israel went out and struck the horses and chariots and killed the Syrians with a great slaughter. The prophets came near to the king of Israel. So No, the prophet. So there's another unnamed prophet, or maybe the same one. The prophet came near to the king of Israel and said to him, Go strengthen yourself and mark and see what you do. For at the return of the year, the king of Syria will come up against you. The servants of the king of Syria said to him, Their God is a God of the hills, therefore they were stronger than we. But let us fight against them in the plain, and surely we will be stronger than they. Do this thing, take the kings away, every man out of his place, and put captains in their place. Muster an army like the army that you have lost, horse for horse and chariot for chariot. We will fight against them in the plain, and surely we will be stronger than them. He listened to their voice and did so. At the return of the year, Ben-Hadad mustered the Syrians and went up to Aphek to fight against Israel. The children of Israel were mustered and given provisions and went against them. The children of Israel encamped before them like two little flocks of young goats, but the Syrians filled the country. A man of God <clears throat> came near and spoke to the king of Israel and said, So now it doesn't say a prophet, it says a man of God. Hmm. Um, spoke to the king of Israel and said, Yahweh says, because the Syrians have said Yahweh is a God of the hills, but he is not a God of the valleys. Therefore, I will deliver all this great multitude into your hand, and you shall know that I am Yahweh. They encamped opposite each other for seven days. So it was in the seventh day the battle was joined, and the children of Israel killed 100,000 footmen of the Syrians in one day. But the rest fled to Aphak into the city, and the wall fell on 27,000 men who were left. Ben-Hadad fled and came into the city into an inner room. His servant said to him, See now, we have heard that the kings of the house of Israel are merciful kings. Please let us put sackcloth on our bodies and ropes on our heads and go out to the king of Israel. Maybe he will save your life. So they put sackcloth on their bodies and ropes in their, on their heads and came to the king of Israel and said, Your servant Ben-Hadad says, Please let me live. He said, Is he still alive? He is my brother. Now the men observed diligently and hurried to take this phrase, and they said, Your brother Ben-Hadad. Then he said, Go bring him. Then Ben-Hadad came out to him and caused him to come up into the chariot. Ben-Hadad said to him, The cities which my father took from your father I will restore. You shall make streets for yourself in Damascus at my father, as my father made in Syria. I, said Ahab, will let you go with this covenant. So he made a covenant with him and let him go. A certain man of the sons of the prophets said to his fellow by Yahweh's word, Please strike me. The man refused to strike him. Then he said to him, Because you have not obeyed Yahweh's voice, behold, as soon as you have departed from me, a lion will kill you. As soon as he had departed from him, a lion found him and killed him. Then he found another man and said, Please strike me. The man struck him and wounded him. So the prophet departed and waited for the king by the way and disguised himself with his headband over his eyes. As the king passed by, he cried to the king and said, your servant went out into the middle of the battle, and behold, a man turned aside and brought a man to me and said, Guard this man. If by any means he is missing, then your life shall be for his life, or else you shall pay a talent of silver. As your servant was busy here and there, he was gone. The king of Israel said to him, So shall your judgment be. You yourself has decided it. He hurried and took the headband away from his eyes, and the king of Israel recognized that he was one of the prophets. He said to him, Yahweh says, Because you have let go of your hand, the man whom I had devoted to destruction, therefore your life will take the place of his life, and your people the place of his people. The king of Israel went to his house, sullen and angry, and came to Samaria. And that is it for today's reading. Thanks for listening. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow. Till then, shalom.